वेलकम टू तरुण आई एस इन दिस क्लास वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस इंटरनेशनल क्रिमिनल कोर्ट वी विल डिस्कस दिस टॉपिक इन सच ए कम्प्रीहेंसिव वे कंपाइल फ्रॉम न्यूमरस ऑथेंटिक सोर्सेज डैट नो क्वेश्चन बी द प्रिलिम्स और द मेन्स एग्जामिनेशन डैट विल कम आउट ऑफ वट वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस इन दिस पर्टिकुलर क्लास यू शुड लिसन टू दिस क्लास वेरी केयरफुली बिकॉज वी विल ऑल्सो सॉल्व सम ऑफ द क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम प्रिलिम्स एज वेल एज फ्रॉम द मेन्स एग्जामिनेशन अगेन this whole class whatever we are going to discuss in this class this will also be available in printer friendly notes as well so let's start this particular class so why we are discussing this particular topic this was because recently international criminal court issued an arrest warrant uh, arrest warrant against the president of russia that is vladimir putin this was in context of the russia ukraine war Say, uh, here you have to keep in mind that Russia is not a member of International Criminal Court, and International Criminal Court can issue arrest warrants. However, to arrest that particular person, it needs the support and cooperation of the member states. Russia is not a member of International Criminal Court. This is just for your understanding. so why we are discussing because it was in news because this particular court had issued an arrest warrant against the president of russia in the context of russia ukraine war at the same time international court of justice was also in news because in december 2023 south africa went to this particular court against israel in the in the context of uh, attack on gaza by the israel so in this class we are going to discuss international criminal court everything which can be uh, which which can come under this particular topic uh, as far as the upsc is concerned we will also see how this particular court is different from the international court of justice in detail so this would be uh, how we will proceed in this particular class we will see some of the basic information about international criminal court in the introduction then we will see what type of crimes uh, that international criminal court can uh, look into then we will see how uh, it actually proceeds into the investigation what is the procedure against which countries it can start the proceedings and all then we will see uh, how many judges are there in this particular court what is what is what should be their qualification how they can become the members of the international criminal court then we will see what are the various members of this uh, icc how to become member of an icc whether india is a member of uh, international criminal court or not then we will see india is not a member of icc then why this is the main question so we will see whatever the reasons are there so that india did not join international criminal court then one of the most important part of this lesson we will see various differences between international criminal court and international court of justice followed by this we will see some of the practice questions so first of all international criminal court so it was established in 2002 and uh, under treaty named rome statute so you have to keep in mind rome statute is a founding treaty of international criminal court and it is uh, associated with and it was established in 2002 so uh, at this moment you can take a pause and you know you recall whatever other treaties you should have in your mind like uh, how geneva convention is related to uh, uh, what is the uh, topic of zanzibar conventions and so on so this is how you should link the different topics so rome statute is associated with international criminal court because it is the founding treaty of this particular court then this is important whenever some extreme words like first last only uh, comes in the upsc prelims uh, questions then generally those statements are wrong but here this statement is correct so you have to keep in mind those statements where such extreme words come so it is the first permanent treaty based international criminal court so pure factual information but the phrase first is here you have to keep in mind that this, this statement is correct 
then some of the languages which are the official languages of international criminal court these are english french arabic chinese russian and spanish then this is an independent international organization and this is not a part of united nations system very important fact its seat is at the hague which is a city in netherlands so the hague is the uh, headquarters of this particular organization you will also see that the same city is also the headquarters of international court of justice although the court's expenses are funded primarily by the state parties to the rome statute so the parties which have signed and ratified this particular treaty they give funds for the running of icc besides this it also receives voluntary contributions from governments international organizations individuals corporations and other entities so this you have to keep in mind that it can receive funds not only from its member countries but also from other sources as well now what are the categories of crime which uh, uh, it can start you know which comes under its jurisdiction so there are basically four crimes which uh, ICC can look into first is genocide so genocide means uh, you kill a large number of members of some ethnic tribe or uh, people of some certain nationality or ethnicity so this comes this is known as genocide and it it is one of the crimes which is comes under the jurisdiction of ICC second is war crimes like uh, you know targeting hospitals and schools during war or uh, recruiting uh, children as soldiers during the wars so these comes under the war crimes then crimes against humanity you know like uh, making uh, people slave or uh, you know acquiring their property or uh, giving drugs and other things to them so these are crimes come under the crimes against humanity then crimes of aggression like uh, at, uh, at, if, if a larger country attacks a country which is much smaller in strength and size so these types of aggress aggressions comes under the fourth category of crimes under the international criminal court so the court has jurisdiction over four different crimes genocide war crimes crimes against humanity and crimes of aggression then investigation into possible crimes now how uh, international criminal court can start the investigations into any of the four listed crimes so first case is if uh, it happens in the country which is a member of the icc so it can goes to the icc and complains to it so icc can start the investigation secondly if united nations security council request icc to launch an investigation so remember it is not the united nations general assembly but it is united nations security council and third like we have in uh, our supreme court of india which can take suo moto notion uh, suo moto notice of uh, anything which is happening in the country so this way it can also initiate investigations on its own initiative so these are the three cases in which icc can launch an investigation into a crime which comes under its jurisdiction so two important things no immunity is granted to any person acting in an official capacity as a head of state member of the government or parliament or an elected representative or public official generally when we read our constitution we see that president or governor is res not responsible for the acts uh, uh, in his official capacity but it is not the case with icc because it doesn't provide any immunity so that is why recently it had issued arrest warrant against the president of an independent country which is not even a member of the uh, of this particular organization secondly icc prosecutes individuals not organizations or government so this is very important fact that it prosecutes individual persons who have committed the crimes who are responsible for the crime and not the organizations or the government as a whole next judges of the international criminal court so candidate for election to the court need to be nationals of the state parties to the rome statute so only those people can are eligible to become the judges at the international criminal court if their countries are members of the icc so this is the first condition 
Secondly, the court has 18 judges, each from a different member country and elected by the member states. So member states themselves elect those people as the judges. It has, uh, the judges are 18 in number and uh, each judge should be from a different country. So uh, two persons who are judges of ICC cannot be from the same country. It requires its members to seek a gender balanced bench. So uh, there should be gender balance in the uh, you know, formation of the benches of this particular court. Enough representation should be given to the uh, women judges as well. Then the judiciary must include representatives of each of the United Nations five regions. So there is not only gender balance but also regional equality. So from different regions there should be representatives in this particular court. Then no uh, judges and prosecutors, prosecutors are elected to non-renewable nine year terms. So the, there are 18 judges who are uh, not eligible for, uh, renew, they don't have renewable term, they are not eligible to you know become the judges again after the end of their nine year terms. Second uh, then no two judges may be nationals of the same state. So two judges from, uh, of uh, this International Criminal Court shouldn't come from the same state. So they are, should belong to the different states because there are already you know 124 members. So uh, why should two people come from the same state? So this is the reason. Now members of the International Criminal Court. There are so by April 2024. There are 124 countries who actually part of the Rome Statute, the treaty which has established the International Criminal Court. Now there are two types of countries associated with the International Criminal Court. There are countries who have never signed the treaty. You know there are around 180 to 190 countries which are part of the United Nations. So besides these 124 countries, whatever the remaining countries are there, so these countries who are not part of the International Criminal Court, they are actually of two types. One is those countries that have never signed the treaty. Some of the examples of these countries include China, Ethiopia, India, Indonesia, Iraq, North Korea, Saudi Arabia and Turkey. Now there are other group of countries who actually signed this particular treaty which established the ICC but did not rectify the treaty. So there are two steps. First you have to sign the treaty and secondly uh, your parliament or whatever you know the legislative body of the country is there it has to rectify the treaty. So these are the countries who have never signed so the question of ratification does not arise. These are the countries who signed the treaty but did not ratify it. So some of the countries are who signed the treaty but did not ratify. These are Egypt, Iran, Israel, Russia, Sudan, Syria and most importantly the United States. Armenia is the recently joint member of the International Criminal Court. It recently joined in November 2023. So it means this particular country has not only signed the Rome Statute but also rectified it. Then some of the countries which actually withdrew their membership from the International Criminal Court are Burundi uh, and Philippines. So these are the countries which in recent past withdrew from the membership of the International Criminal Court. So these are the, uh, this is actually the membership of the International Criminal Court. <coughs> now we have seen that India uh, never signed uh, this the treaty which established the International Criminal Court. Now what are the reasons for it? So there are main three reasons why uh, India did not join International Criminal Court. The first is India says that ICC is a criminal court unlike the International Court of Justice which is a civil court and arrogates to itself the right to prosecute matters against countries that are not even the signatories. So this is the first problem of India with this particular court. India says that it is a criminal court and it uh, acquires so many authority that it, it can even initiate criminal uh, investigations against the countries who even did not sign this particular treaty. Second problem of India is that 
it gives undue power to the United Nations Security Council. You know, only five uh, countries are permanent members of the United Nations Security Council. So, if one of the members says, uh, to ICC to initiate some investigations against a country, so it can do so. So India says that it also violates some of the rights of the countries. Why you are giving such power to United Nations Security Council? Why not, why not to United Nations General Assembly, where every country is a member of? Third problem of India uh, with not joining the ICC was that it says why you have omitted crimes like cross-border terrorism, India, you know, suffering from this thing right from our independence and uh, use of nuclear arms and weapons of mass destruction. So these are very important crimes which are actually happening or there is a threat of these crimes which might happen anytime. So why are you not including such crimes under the jurisdictions of International Criminal Court? So these are India's objections. That is why India never signed the treaty which established the International Criminal Court. And the treaty which established this particular court is Rome Statute. Now one of the very important uh, topic under this particular lesson is what are the differences between International Criminal Court and International Court of Justice. So let's see. First of all, there is one similarity that both these courts have their headquarters at The Hague, which is a city in the Netherlands. So that is the only similarity between them. Then, uh, while ICC prosecutes individuals, International Court of Justice settles disputes between states. So this is the first major difference between them. International Criminal Court prosecutes individuals, whereas International Court of Justice settles dispute between states. Secondly, uh, for example, much of International Court of Justice work is devoted to settling the boundary lines of maritime, uh, which might be maritime or land related between the states. So this is the first major difference. ICC prosecutes individuals, ICJ settles dispute between states. The second difference, ICJ, International Court of Justice, has been around since 1945, whereas International Criminal Court was established in 2002 by Rome Statute. So it is of quite recent origin, whereas International Court of Justice is quite old. Then, ICC is not a part of the United Nations, whereas International Court of Justice is one of the major organs of the United Nations system. Then International Criminal Court as the name suggests is a criminal court unlike the ICJ which adjudicates on civil matters. Then International Criminal Court is composed of 18 judges for a non-renewable nine year term. 18 judges non-renewable term of nine years whereas International Court of Justice is also composed of 18 judges for a renewable 9-year term. So 18 judges is common, 9-year term is common. However, here uh, the term is non-renewable in case of ICC, whereas in case of International Court of Justice, the term is renewable. India is not a member of International Criminal Court, whereas ICJ being an organ of the United Nations, India is a part of International Court of Justice. So these are the major differences between International Criminal Court and International Court of Justice. One, uh, one more similarity uh, is also there between these two courts that both these courts can investigate the crime of genocide. So, but the difference is International Criminal Court investigates or prosecutes individuals for the crimes of genocide whereas International Court of Justice prosecutes nations for, or countries for the crime of genocide if they commit it. So uh, this was a lecture on differences between International Court of Justice and International Criminal Court. I hope no question be it the prelims or mains will come out of this class. Now let's practice some of the MCQs in this particular topic as well. So with reference to the International Criminal Court, consider the following. Cross-border terrorism, use of weapons of mass destruction, genocide, crimes against humanity. So we have to see uh, whatever, uh, which, which are the crimes which, are, which actually comes under the jurisdiction of the International Criminal Court. 
so we have seen that india was against the joining of icc because these two crimes were not part of its jurisdiction so hence its answer should be 3 and 4 only that is b only 2 then with reference to the differences between international criminal court and international court of justice consider the following statements while icj is headquarter at geneva this is wrong because both the courts are headquarter in the hague so first statement is wrong while the icc prosecutes individuals icj settles disputes between both individuals as well as states this is again wrong because icj settles disputes between nations only states only and not between individuals so second statement is also wrong icj is composed of 18 judges for a non-renewable nine-year term while icj is composed of 18 judges for a renewable nine-year term this statement is absolutely correct india is not a member of icc whereas icj includes india as its member this statement is also correct so again here two statements are wrong answer should be b that is two only so this is the question for you to practice you should read the question and give your answers in the comment section and compare your performance with the fellow aspirants there is also a question uh, uh, for mains examination if a question comes there is a topic under gs mains paper 2 that is important international institutions agencies and fora their structure and mandate so in this particular topic a question can be asked on this organization so we have created one question for you how do the jurisdictional scope objectives and approaches to the justice of the international criminal court and the international court of justice differ and what are their implications so you should write answer to this particular question if you find any difficulty then again we have a model answer for this question as well uh, so all these resources are available uh, free of course to the students of Tarun ISB they are the classroom students or online uh, students so join Tarun IS as soon as possible and make your journey to the civil services very easy keep watching thank you